Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's BDO44 coming at you with another video. Okay, so USA Basketball has lost three out of the last four games. Uh, France uh, teed off on them today. And, uh, you know, Evan Fournier, a guy that I've been mentioning recently at random, just completely uh, went off on them. And, you know, he said the same thing that everybody else is saying about the, uh, USA Basketball. That essentially, uh, you know, they have individually the individual great players, but collectively they just don't really have that great of a squad. When it doesn't really come together like it should, they haven't had enough time for it to do so. And as a result, they're not winning. You know, basketball is the type of game where you can't just slap a bunch of players together and expect them to be able to overpower people unless you bring overpowering type of players. Now, with the respect to the players that they have, what I'm talking about is Giannis, Zion. You need that, those type of athletes to overcome real life cohesive basketball. You gotta understand these teams overseas, they practice together for the Olympics like it's a real thing. They're not looking at the Olympics like, oh, we can just kinda, as soon as we leave the finals, let's just jump on a plane and we're gonna go out there, we're gonna beat everybody up. No, these teams, these places, first of all, they take basketball very seriously. They're evolving basketball in their own way. They haven't adapted to some of these rule changes that we have that have made our game a bit more uh, soft. Uh, I'm not going to pull any punches. Our game is softer than it was in the past. They're still playing with rules that are more comparable to the old school rules, but are playing with new school ways. Shooting the ball and spreading the floor and, and all of that stuff, ball movement and stuff like that, defense, rebounding. They are learning the game in a way that we should be teaching it. And they're playing with one another uh, as a team much more than our USA team ever even gets an opportunity to. And you could you couple that with the fact that a lot of guys, you know, spend a lot of time away from the game. So as to where USA basketball may have been coming together to, you know, last summer, maybe they would have had more, more opportunities for the coaching staff to kind of prepare. As to where a lot of these teams overseas, they have been <laughs> preparing for this and have been building this for years years we're not talking about just all oh, we come together for the summer or we come no they f four years ago okay the olympics are coming up let's get our team together and let's start practicing a lot of countries do that because they know what they have to go up against when they run into the u.s they know what they have to go up against when they run up against some of these other places that have developed so it's like they're on a string they send their team out there and even though they don't have the superstar talent they know what each other's going to do back in front as to where our guys have to learn each other they know each other as it pertains to being uh opponents these guys know each other's pertains to being teammates and that overrides the type of talent that we brought and look i'm not gonna lie to you we've had a lot of players going in and out of the lineup because of covid stuff you see zach levine going out you see bradley beal going out you got guys coming in like like um um javel mcgee's coming in kevin love i mean i don't even know why he was on the team in the first place let's just be honest usa basketball hasn't really had the best squad this year and you know they left some guys some guys didn't come over that maybe would have uh made this this a bit more uh lopsided i guess you can say you know i looked at the roster i'm like i like the names don't get it twisted these are all-stars big time all-stars who should be able to get gold but the team is not constructed in such a way in my opinion to where you're gonna get the most out of guys who have not played with one another if you have more tradition, like if you play a more traditional style, you got your point guard who's a pass first guy, you got your shooting guard who's looking to shoot, you got your small forward who's a, a wing that could, could be a three and D, you got your four who can play in the Like if you have a traditional style of basketball team, then guys can just slip in and possibly have a chance to, you know what I mean, really, really do stuff without without practicing. But what we have is like Dame running the point, we got all kinds of got JaVale with the center. Like we have a kind of an unorthodox squad down there of players that don't necessarily fit to be completely honest with you a lot of guys that score the ball shoot first guys like who's making other guys better who's bringing everybody together who's doing the dirty work it's like a lot of stuff on that roster just looks like okay we like that player okay we're gonna take that player because he's good for this okay we like that player because his image is nice okay we like that player because he's like a legacy act so let's bring him in okay this guy really played well in usa basketball a year ago so let's bring him in it's like they didn't put this team together with the intention of being able to go up against the teams that they're facing. 
They just put players together. Whoever wanted to come, okay, we're coming. We didn't, we're USA, so we don't, like, we don't have to take it seriously. And then, like I said, a couple of that with the rule differences and changes. Guys are used to being able to flop all over the place. Guys are used to fouls being called a certain way, so they're, they're doing certain things that, that work in the NBA, but ain't going to fly in, 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 in Olympic play. So this is what we got. Our team and all of our, our you know, modified NBA ways are getting our hats brought to us. We're getting stomped out by teams that have maybe one or two NBA players, but the rest of the team is a bunch of guys that have been playing every Friday, every Wednesday for the past three years. So we want another. So, hey, man, it is what it is. I'm, I haven't watched a single game. I, I'm not interested, to be honest with you. I have a weird thing about watching basketball if it's not played at a professional level. I don't really particularly like college ball. I don't really like big three. I don't like anything, honestly, that doesn't look like NBA basketball play. It's a certain level of tempo. It's a certain level of, of athleticism. It's, it's a certain visual that I like to watch when I'm seeing the game being played. And when, when people who don't play at that level are playing, I generally lose interest or get frustrated. I'm weird. I know, but that's the truth. So I don't really watch it because I'm watching other teams and I'm like, USA is either going to blow them out or they're going to play down to the opponent, lollygag, and it's not going to be very good basketball. It's one or the other. I've watched enough USA basketball to know it's really not for me. Uh, so I just don't watch it. But from afar, I've been paying attention to the record and I'm not surprised because this is kind of what we saw um, with the Vince Carter USA team, the team that wasn't. Was it that year? I know there was, yeah, I think it was one of the years where Vince came. I think Kobe wasn't there or something like that. And they went out there with a similar type of squad. I think it was like Chris Bosh or somebody, a couple guys. They were really good, but they didn't have the time spent with one another. And they didn't uh, have necessarily the overpowering athletes, the LeBrons, the Kobe's down there that could just tear you apart that year. They just didn't have them. And I think that's what we're running into here. With respect to KD, I like KD a lot. But I keep telling people, KD is, he's, he looks great, but that injury did do something. I'm not sure what it did, but it slowed him down to a degree. He's not, he's not what he was. He's still extremely effective. He's still extremely great. But I'm telling you, I, there, something's off about KD, and I know what it is, the dang injury. So I think he's picking his spots. I think he's doing a careful job of making sure that he stays healthy. Um, and I think he's making it look easy, but I, I do think that old KD before the injury, these games wouldn't have been lost. I think that's what I think. That's what I think. I think that's the difference. And I'm looking at guys like Dame, you know, you know, how, how is he playing? How's the coach running things? So I would need somebody to tell me, obviously I'm not watching, but at the end of the day, when you got guys going in and out of the lineup, um, for various reasons, got a couple guys, big pieces just came in from the finals in Middleton and Holiday and I believe somebody from the Suns Booker. We got all three of those pieces coming in. Now they're running. It's just it's hard to to get a cohesive play when there's ever changing moves in any basketball team, any lineup. So that that is a huge part of it as well. If they can just get a consistent group of guys down there, get a rotation that works for them, I think you'll start seeing the wins pile up. But I don't know how the format is, how many more games they got left. You know, when the pressure starts to mount, starts becoming playoff like stuff for gold and meddling and all that. So, you know, you would need to tell me. But I know as the pressure starts to build, if they can get more basketball played, more consistency going, the wins will start piling. I don't know that they're going to get gold, but they're certainly not going to fizzle out if this goes this way. So we'll see, man. We'll see. My name is BDF44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.